everyone. On behalf of the League of Women Voters of St. Paul, in partnership with the League of Women Voters of Roseville area, I welcome you to the broadcast of the District 3 Ramsey County Commissioner Candidate Forum. We appreciate the candidates taking the time to be here tonight and the audience taking the time to listen. The forum is being live streamed on the St. Paul Neighborhood Network and broadcast live by Nine North on cable channel 19 and on ninenorth.org. Recordings of this event, even of a computer screen, may not be used without the express written approval of the League. The League will only allow audio and video of this event to be broadcast in its entirety, except by the media reporting the event. Before we begin, we need to acknowledge that our community, communities are located on the ancestral lands of the Dakota and Ojibwe peoples, and recognize that much of the wealth of our country was built by enslaved Africans and obtained through settler colonization. The colonial and racist ideologies and systems of the past are embedded in our current systems in subtle and not so subtle ways and require our mindfulness to create ever greater equity. My name is Rachel Geyser. I will be the moderator tonight. I'm a league trained moderator and a member of the League of Women Voters of Roseville area. I am not a resident of District 3 and so do not have the privilege to vote for either of these candidates. The League of Women Voters encourages, encourages informed and active participation in government, works to increase understanding of major public policy issues, and influences public policy through education and advocacy. Our membership is open to all, age 16 or older. The League is proud to be nonpartisan, neither supporting nor opposing candidates or political parties at any level of government. Sponsorship of this forum is a public service providing you with an opportunity to hear the candidates discuss important issues face-to-face -face and is not an endorsement by the League. All opinions presented are those of the candidates, not of the League of Women Voters. The candidates have all agreed to the forum rules, which were included in their invitation to participate, and I know that they'll give us a respectful and informative evening. Tonight, uh, we have the candidates running for the District 3 Ramsey County Commissioner position. With us at the moment is candidate Trista Mattis Castillo. Uh, candidate David Singleton is expected to arrive later. Questions from voters were emailed to the League. Because there are many topics of interest to the community, similar or related questions may be merged together to help us cover more topics. The candidates will have up to three minutes for opening and closing statements and two minutes for responses to questions unless I indicate otherwise. Rebuttals are only allowed if a candidate is called out by name by another candidate and will be limited to 30 seconds. The timer here will hold up a 30 second warning sign and then a stop sign when the allotted time is up. Candidates may finish their sentence and then must stop. Candidates uh, drew numbers, but we're gonna wait on that to determine the order and then um, I'll switch off every time. Closing statements will be in the opposite order of opening statements. And that's enough for me. I'm gonna start with our opening statement here. So candidate, candidate Magic Castillo. Yes, thank you so much. And I wanna first say thank you to the League and to the Cable Network for airing uh, tonight's discussion and for, for the work that the League of Women Voters has done across uh, the state of Minnesota to organize these events. So I just wanna say thank you to you all. Uh, for putting these on. I'm Trista Matis Castillo, and I'm currently the chair of the Ramsey County Board of Commissioners, and I'm running for re-election for District 3. I, I have, I'm completing my first term of office. It has been a wild four years, uh, none of which could have been anticipated uh, that when we were planning on the work four years ago. But I will tell you, it hasn't been all bad. It has been um, an interesting time through the global pandemic where our public health at the county really rolled out services to our community in the most inclusive way. We have the highest rates of vaccinations in Ramsey County across the state. Uh, we have worked with many different communities to make sure that they had the right information around COVID um, and had access to vaccines if they chose to take them uh, with the right information. So something we can be very proud of. After the pandemic started, we also had the murder of George Floyd and we had civil unrest here in District 3 uh, where we experienced a significant amount of damage during that, those, the uprising and unrest. And our community came together very strongly and the county came together very strongly to work in community to make sure there was still access to food, access to services, and then to think about how we begin to build back 
um, or build new for the first time in a really inclusive way. We've set our priorities around racial equity, not just as a talking point, but actually as a call to action for our entire community. And we have invested our money to back that up. So uh, there was a, an additional onset of funds uh, that came from the federal government in response to both the pandemic and civil unrest that we were able to invest directly into our community with historic investments in affordable housing, historic investments into small business and growing our BIPOC businesses here in the county and thinking about how we deliver services better. So even though we had um, tremendous turmoil, it was difficult to deliver services as many of our employees and staff were working remotely and working for home. We figured out how to do it and we worked together to do that. So it has been an incredible four year journey with an opportunity to learn and grow together and I'm excited to continue this journey forward. Thank you very much. That concludes the opening statements. We now move to the question and answer portion of the forum. A candidate has up to two minutes to respond to each question, unless I note otherwise. And candidate Madagascio, I'm gonna uh, start with you. Sure. What is the most important climate issue for the county to address? And what strategies, if any, would you promote to address this issue? I love this question. So I think that um, it's really important to understand that addressing climate change and resiliency of our community is is essential that every level of government take action. And in fact, I believe it so strongly that this year as I became board chair, we added it as one of our strategic priorities of the county, climate change and community resiliency. We know that the impacts of climate and the, um, and the changing to our environment is not only impacting Ramsey County directly, but it's gonna impact our communities of color and low income communities the most. When you think about resiliency, when you think about how our homes might be built to withstand weather changes and extreme weather changes and so it's really important for us as a county to take a holistic approach not only in um, how we design and, and plan for the future but how we invest our dollars today so as we're thinking about those historic investments in affordable housing and new projects we want to make sure that the housing being built can withstand climate change as we think about planning for our roads and road construction how does that change, whether it's in the materials we purchase, the, the speed of the roads, the design of the roads that impact our communities, whether that's air quality, water quality, or the resiliency around heat and cold extremes. And so we're taking a holistic approach, looking widely at the county and doing a whole assessment, similar to what we had done with our economic development plan around housing and businesses, but to take a look at it and really address how we can decarbonize Ramsey County, how we can approach this issue and how we invest every dollar with an eye to climate and resiliency. Thank you. Next question. Should county residents have an opportunity to be heard at county board, county board committees, county board workshops, and county advisory committee meetings? If yes, how would you ensure this? Yeah, so um, I think I need to unpack that question because it's really loaded. And unfortunately, there isn't a, currently in our system a space at all of those things. But we do want the community to be heard and their voices to be heard. And, and the work that we're doing really is driven by the community. So we have changed already and continue to grow our um, advisory committees, our community support committees, and all of our new programs. We're doing it with community. So it, a fine example would be our transforming systems together. We went out to community leaders across the community that actually elected other representatives from the community to help us design that work, to think about what is it around transforming our systems of justice? What is the biggest thing they need to work on? And so the community chose their North Star and are leading that work. We have worked with trusted messengers throughout the pandemic to make sure that we're reaching community members that people trust from a, a friendly face in community. We have a very diverse community in Ramsey County to make sure that we're working with community. We appoint advisory committees. We have about 25 advisory committees at the county, maybe more, uh, that we actually um, 
we put out an, a call for applications. Community members from different districts apply. There is a screening process, but we make sure that we have a diversity of voices uh, to help lead that work. And so when they're doing that work, then they come and present to us at workshops. So community is being heard at the workshops. They're delivering the information and program design directly from the community. Great, thank you. Uh, next question. In regard to the Rice Creek Commons development in Arden Hills, what is the role of Ramsey County, if any, to ensure the development moves forward and for other considerations for the development, such as housing, public transit, and change to office retail needs in the current economy? Yeah, so, you know, this is a, I, I'm gonna tiptoe a little bit on this only because, um, you know, we recently had a, a, a ruling on a, a civil a lawsuit, and so I don't want to get the county in trouble. And even though I'm in a candidate in this space, I still represent the county. But it is really apparent that we need to continue to move forward in our values. We want to partner with the leadership of Arden Hills, the elected body, and the community of Arden Hills to make sure that we're delivering what the needs of the community are. And what we know that those needs are is more affordable housing. There is a huge opportunity at that development for more density, uh, for appropriate density of the of the land that is there, and to make sure that we have opportunities for affordable housing, for senior housing, for mixed use, and for income for jobs and businesses. So we feel really strongly about what that looks like. We are um, continuing to be at the table and to communicate with the city of Arden Hills and with the elected officials there, and we hope that we can move forward in that development. You know, with Ramsey County, we're the smallest county in the state of Minnesota for land mass. So every piece of land that is available for development really is highly valued and should be thought of in a way that how do we do that what's best long term again thinking about our environmental goals thinking about our racial equity um, but also thinking about how we use land and to make sure that we're getting the highest best use for our taxpayers and our community so this is a really important topic that we don't take lightly uh, but it is going to it's going to require partnerships and it's going to require the community making sure that their voices are heard and that we're talking in partnership around Around. How do we get, make sure that there's opportunity and access? And that includes transit, that includes uh, roads, that includes the support when you build out a neighborhood for groceries and goods and services as well. And so really taking that whole picture into approach. Thank you. Next question. As a county commissioner, what measures, if any, would you support to reinforce enforce or ensure voter confidence in our elections? Uh, this is a great topic, and I, I know the league is really passionate about it, and so am I, because our democracy is at stake when anyone questions the integrity of our elections. I will tell you that we have safe and secure and accessible elections in Ramsey County. Um, I know I personally have certified elections. It was the greatest joy of my life to be able to certify the election, uh, to really take into account what does that look like. So we have huge number of, of staff and volunteers and paid help that comes in during our election time to make sure that voters have the information they need to make sure that it's safe and secure and that there's no threat of intimidation or coercion while they're coming to vote. We um, check our numbers, we recheck our numbers, and we certify our elections. We make sure that voters, when they're sending in absentee ballots, that they're complete, uh, and that they're, and if there's a problem, I can tell you, during the pandemic, I did my own absentee ballot, I sent it in, and I got it back with the highlighted section of where I went wrong. And so, to think about that, and I didn't even do that on purpose, but they sent it back and said, you didn't, you didn't complete this section correctly. Here's a new ballot, your other one is spoiled, and here are better instructions. And so to think about the every level of that detail that it goes into making sure that we have fair um, and safe elections is really important. And for county commissioners across the state, and especially in Ramsey County, this is a personal issue because it's up to us to make sure that that's happening. Thank you. Uh, next question. What is the state of public transportation in Ramsey County? What changes, if any, would you support in regard to public transportation? Yeah, um, public transit is, a, is um, something that's incredibly important. As we think about transit for our future, again, if you line up our climate goals and decarbonization, we can't do that simply on electric vehicles. We need to have public transit services. We have 
um, over 500,000 people living in Ramsey County, and if we want to reduce vehicle miles traveled, the best way to do that is through transit service. And we need to improve our transit service. Um, and that is through reliable, dedicated services in every neighborhood. That isn't just for commuters, but for someone who wants to go to the grocery store or a doctor's appointment or needs to take the kids to school in multiple stops. So we need to increase our transit access in Ramsey County. We um, partner at the county with the Met Council and, and sometimes uh, um, advocate to the, the Met Council to, for our own needs as well as to the state. Since I've been on the county board, I've advocated for additional bus rapid transit in my community, and we have successfully secured uh, future lines on Rice Street and Como Avenue, uh, which is really exciting, because these are neighborhoods that have not had reliable service in the past, but need that and have a high need for reliable, um, accessible service. What that also means is that we need to reconstruct our roads to make sure that our, um, transit can pass and that buses can come frequently with improved stops. So we're investing in those areas with the gold line, uh, the purple line, and then the bus BRT lines as well. Thank you. Next question. What changes, if any, would you make to Ramsey County Board and staff rules and procedures to make the decision-making process open and transparent to the public? So I believe that our decision-making process is open and transparent to the public. Um, I, I would say that um, all of our workshops are public. Uh, anyone is welcome to come. They're also televised and recorded, so they're open and available. Same with our board meetings. There's, there's nothing that's not open and transparent. What I would like to see is that, um, and it's tricky with scheduling, but is that we potentially change times a couple times a year at least uh, to bring those meetings to community or at different times. Right now our um, county board is Tuesdays at nine and most people who have jobs or employed or are taking care of children can't come in, in person. But it is televised and it is online so they can watch it. But I think that there could be some opportunity to bring more people in at different times of the day and to have other meetings at that time, which I would be a strong supporter of. Thank you. Next question. Given Ramsey County's diversity in ethnicity, economics, and more, how would you work towards seeing that diversity reflected in county leadership and or community programs? please give specific examples instead of just your position. Sure. Uh, so you're right. Ramsey County is the, is the most diverse county in the state of Minnesota. We have somewhere between 109 and 119 languages and dialects spoken in Ramsey County, uh, which is really exciting. And we've worked really hard to make sure that our workforce at Ramsey County is one of the biggest employers in Ramsey County, uh, reflects that of our community. That goes true for all of our boards and committees as well, and our county board. We're currently the most racially diverse and most diverse board in the state of Minnesota, and that will continue after this election, no matter how the final ballots flow because of the candidates in the race. So our diversity will continue on the county board itself. Uh, on our boards and committees, we work really hard to make sure that we're recruiting and appointing so that we have a wide variety of diversity. Currently, our leadership team at the, at the county, so the executive team, is uh, the most racially diverse team as well. We have uh, gender and racial diversity represented. And more than half of our county employees are uh, identify as people of color. So I think we're, we're on the right path. There's always room for more. There's specific departments and areas that we could do better, and we're focused on how do we do outreach, how do we partner with community to help us do that outreach, and refer people to committees and, um, and to boards that we can appoint. Thank you. Next question. What do you see as the biz biggest challenge for Ramsey County in the next decade, and how would you address it? Yeah, I would say our biggest challenge continues to be in the areas of affordable housing and making sure we have enough housing for our community that's affordable and sustainable. Currently, we are short about 15,000 units today of affordable housing in Ramsey County. And we are, we're not gonna be able to just build our way out of that quick enough to meet the needs of our community. So the you know thinking about how do we make sure we have enough housing and then how do we pay for it? 
The other big challenge of Ramsey County, as I mentioned before, it's the smallest county uh, in geography with the second highest population. But about half of our land is actually not taxable. The only way the county has a budget other than what comes appropriate from the state or federal government is through property taxes. But half of our, ta our land isn't taxable because of the state capital, our universities, our nonprofits, our hospitals. Uh, makes it non-taxable or government-owned land. So we have to think about how do we both grow and grow our tax base so that we're not putting the burden solely on the homeowners and property owners in Ramsey County. This is a big issue that we wrestle with frequently as we think about growing programs and services, investing in affordable housing, investing in transit services that we need to continue to lift up. So working with our legislature, working with the Capitol to explain the situation, to make sure that we're advocating for direct appropriations, county program aid, working with our federal delegation to make sure that these things can get funded is critical to the work that we do at Ramsey County and to think about how we alleviate the burden on our property owners while lifting up our entire community and growing our tax base. Thank you. Uh, you've made some references to uh, the importance of affordable housing mm -hmm. and the American Rescue Plan Act funding. So I'm going to ask uh, just to dig a little bit deeper into that. Uh, so the allocation of $37 million of the American Rescue Plan Act funding was given. Uh, so what measures do you support to encourage effective use of these funds? So um, when you, so specifically the 37 million you're talking about went directly for affordable housing. So we actually got 90 million total um, and half of that went to affordable housing. Uh, and we partnered with the city of St. Paul who also matched that allocation of their rescue plan dollars to make sure that we have a big pool so that we can start growing our affordable housing. We turned, we turned that money out as quickly as we could and we're already on our fourth round now, an RFP for our fourth round to send money out to developers and partners to grow affordable housing. That's in a preservation of existing units and upgrading and again going to the weatherization and resiliency upgrading existing affordable housing to keep them affordable as well as um, the development of new. We really believe strongly oftentimes when it comes to affordable housing there's what they call funding stacks. So developers have to apply to lots of different streams of money in order to make the development work and make the dollars work. And, and the part that has been difficult and our greatest need is at 30% of our area and median income in Ramsey County, which is our lowest income earners. And so we believe strongly that that's where the bulk of our resources need to go to help make sure that we're meeting the needs of people because that's where the greatest subsidy needs to be. So we have, we have, we have um, allocated that money and it becomes generating a pool of funds as well as they go out the door. We at, Simultaneously, we implemented an HRA levy so that we can continue to backfill that pool of money as it's going out the door that we have room for more housing stock. So this is an incredibly important strategy to make sure that we're building uh, housing and that we can fund the support for that housing. Thank you. Yes. Next question. What measures, if any, do you support to increase accessibility of Ramsey County recycling and hazardous waste services for all residents? Oh, I was hoping we would have a garbage question. This is so great. <laughs> so I serve on the Recycling and Energy Board and we have been working really hard on um, access to community. In fact, we just announced that we're building a new hazardous household hazardous waste site. It will be on Larpenter Avenue on the Roseville side of Larpenter uh, between Dale and Rice. So if you and think geography um, and we're actually starting we've just held a couple open houses but with community to design what that site will look like but it will be a place where we can collect household hazardous waste where we can have community space for education and learning uh, potentially you know kind of right now the 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 dream we're dream we're in the dreaming phase as we design uh, but also having potentially a tool library or permanent fix-it clinics because we really want to help our community think about how we 
reduce, reuse, and recycle. Um, and, and it has to go in that order. We need to reduce our overall waste altogether, and then we need to reuse as much as possible, and then recycle. Recycling is, a, is an interesting area that it's only recycling if there's a market for it. Um, and there isn't always a market. So sometimes we feel good about putting our plastic bottles in the recycling bin, but if there's no one to buy those plastic bottles, it's not really recycling. And so that's why it's incredibly important for us to think about reducing, reusing, and recycling. So um, to have a place here, uh, Central, Roseville is the center of our county, to have a place that community will be able to go predictably with, with standard hours to bring those things is gonna be really exciting, but it also is an opportunity for us to think what else we can do in those spaces, um, to think about a circular economy and reusing our items while we recycle. Thank you. Yeah. Next question. What are your top priorities for public safety, in particular for those suburbs that contract with the Ramsey County Sheriff's Office for law enforcement? Yeah, so public safety is is a um, is really important that we're making sure that we're taking care of our communities um, in in public safety that we have the ability to respond appropriately, uh, and you know as we've seen over the last couple of years, our um, law enforcement is is. Um, tapped out in many ways. They're exhausted uh, and they're doing good work, but they're exhausted. And so to think about how we're also making sure that we have resources available so that they can continue to perform well and do good work with our community. One of the things that we did is we invested 16 million of our ARP funds, so our American Rescue Plan funds, into community first public safety in Ramsey County. And what that looks like is actually from the source of the call. So when a call comes into the 911 call center, we have redesigned with community. We had a large community advisory board to say, what are the top 100 most frequent calls 911 receives? And what's the appropriate level of response? So if someone calls and says they have a cat in the tree, do we really want to send fire rescue out to get a cat out of the tree? It's very expensive. It's very taxing and time consuming. Or should we send someone with a ladder? So um, I use that kind of a little tongue in cheek, but it's a great example of of meeting the appropriate response uh, for the appropriate call. So we took things like um, a mother calling, it's very frequent to call, their child is n unwilling to go to school and mom has had it. Uh, and, and they want help. Well, we don't necessarily want to send law enforcement, but we might want to send a social worker or a community member who's trained to help with that situation. We want to make sure if someone's in a mental health crisis that we're sending the appropriate level of response, especially if it's not a violent situation but they just need help that we're sending social workers. And this change is, gonna, is not only going to help with community public safety in the whole county to include those contracted cities, but it also frees up our officers to do the work that only officers can do. Thank you. Yes. What measures would you support to promote public health in the county? Well, I think we have seen the value of public health over the last couple of years. And I just want to say a special shout out to our public health team. They have worked tirelessly to make sure our community is safe and healthy and has the information they need. We've worked really hard with community through trusted me messengers, and I think that's a really great program that we need to continue and continue to fund so that folks um, who maybe haven't always trusted government for a very good reason. We have a lot of immigrants and refugees who have had different experiences. Even our African American and former descendant of slaves have had bad experiences with government, especially when it comes to public health and experiments, and so they don't trust. And so we've worked really hard to push this out to a level, working with Black Nurses Rock, working with our um, Hmong American Partnership and our Karin organizations to make sure the information is received to community and I think that needs to continue, whether it's the COVID pandemic or it's the next pand pandemic, unfortunately, on the horizon. As our systems change, we need to continue to make sure that we're building trust with community from faces and voices that they already trust so that we can build out this system. And I would continue to support our entire public health team to make sure we're addressing those issues. Thank you. Next question. How would you strike a balance between satisfying the short-term desires of constituents with the sometimes conflicting long-term goals of the county? This, this, is the, this is the balance of the job. That's a great question. And 
Um, there are some things that community needs right away, emergency services, financial assistance, and we need to continue to improve the delivery of those services and the timeline in which that they're delivered. And I think that's something that we are working to address. Um, and it's gonna take a little time, but we need, to, we need to do it and we need to take that really seriously. I think we still need to think about the strategic plans and, and be really thoughtful about the way we do it. A great example would be the environment and climate. We need to take a holistic, a holistic view and not just the short-term quick fix. Uh, a fine example of that is the 94 freeway. There's a lot of conversation about how that destroyed a neighborhood. Uh, the Rondo community when 94 came in, but it also had detrimental health outcomes for that community as well with uh, air pollution, higher levels of asthma, um, and, and actual mental health issues because of the toxins in the air, and it, because it was a short-term look and not thinking for the future. So we really do have to take a whole look at when we're investing, when we're designing, and what does that look like for our community? So that we're not just doing the same old, same old because that's where the road is or that's the way the road has always looked, but maybe we truly need to take a look at uh, reducing lanes, slowing cars down, uh, making sure we're investing in transit. Uh, maybe it's changing the species of our trees as we've seen a lot of blight in different tree species over the last several years. And if we think about long-term about how we change the variety of those species. And so really taking a hard look at it is incredibly important, but we still need to meet the here and now and the immediate needs of our community. So it's a constant balance, but something that I take very seriously and I know the rest of the county board does as well. Thank you. Uh, for some county residents have difficult time getting health care assistance to pay for therapy from the county. What would you do to help people, if any, uh, uh, get easier access to services when needed? Yeah, so one of the things that we've done um, to get access to services, we do have a, uh, when you say therapy, I'm assuming you're meaning mental health, maybe. Uh, there's lots of different kinds of therapy, but we do have... Um, uh, emergency call line and county direct uh, therapy services, mental health services and crisis line. But the other thing we have done so that the access points would be easier is we've actually created what we call navigators. So we have community sites. Most of our public libraries have community navigators. We've moved our service centers into our libraries where people are in community, especially for those who might be in the suburbs or on the outside of St. Paul, because coming downtown might be tricky or, or even unsettling. Some people are nervous about coming downtown St. Paul. We want to make sure that people have those access. So during the pandemic, we pushed those services out. We were going to maintain those service centers uh, and continue to grow them, as well as making sure we have navigators. So if sometimes we don't even know what questions we ask, what we should be asking. We just know we need help. And so going to a navigator at a service center to say, here's the situation. I don't even know where to begin. The navigator can help with getting access, making sure they're getting the right forms, the right information, and getting it delivered to the right places so that we can get our community help quicker. Um, we, we have seen, we tried this during the pandemic, it's working. We've, we're making some tweaks to perfect it and we're gonna continue to invest in that into the future. Thank you. Next question. What county services do you believe are critical to ensure the safety and well-being of our communities? Well, I would say all the county services are critical. Uh, you know, our number one priority is around social services, uh, safety and justice, um, information and public records, our um, public health, uh, and 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 then of course our infrastructure and economic development. So, so all of these services that the county. Um, puts out to our community are critical to make sure that we're working. We're the conduit between the state and federal government and our city councils to make sure that, that the um, resources are flowing, that there's a holistic plan, and that we can deliver services directly to our community. So I would say they're all critical. I don't know any of the services that are not, um, and which is why when we're doing our budget, um, we this year we did performance-based budgeting to really take a look of is the, are the dollars we're investing actually impacting our community for the better? Is it improving the lives of our community so that we're not just 
investing in programs that have always been around if they're not working. So we have implemented performance-based budgeting this year. Uh, we had some great evaluations that are based solely on our strategic priorities uh, and, and backed up against our strategic priorities to make sure that the best services are be being delivered in the best way that are actually improving the lives of our community. Thank you. Uh, candidate Singleton, I'll repeat the question for you. Sure. Uh, what county services do you believe are critical to ensure the safety and well-being of our communities? Well, <clears throat> my platform is mainly public safety, and I think that is a critical service uh, to be able to implement the other services that um, the county is uh, oversees and uh, has authority over. And I uh, don't think that that service has been properly um, funded and supported. And so we have some issues that uh, need to be addressed um, before some of these other projects uh, are implemented in our city and district. Thank you. All right, for the next question, candidate Singleton, you'll go first. The Ramsey County commissioners traditionally come to a consensus and there are usually no split votes. Please discuss how your personal and professional life experiences can help build consensus with others when the interests of District 3 residents are involved. Well, <clears throat> I like the consensus uh, voting system. It uh, gives everybody an opportunity to um, explain their either life experience, professional experience, um, and I think that's good um, for a board to work together and respect each other and even learn from each other. And so um, what I would do is I would just explain my position and I would try and back that up with, um, like I said, life experience. Uh, if there's any uh, data that is, uh, that I can qualify as being true and, uh, and I would, uh, just uh, explain that to the to the commission and try to encourage them to um, look at it from you know my point of view as well as me listening to their point of view. Thank you, candidate Mattis Casillo. Yeah, you know the. Um it's interesting that uh, the kind of view is that it's a cons it's a consensus with very rarely split votes. And I'll tell you the reason that that is achieved is because we do a lot of work to make sure that before something is brought for a final vote, all the work has been done. So we've worked an item through workshops. Our staff have worked it. We've worked it with community. We're lifting up the voices of community. And so we've done a ton of homework. We've done we've done all that data. So by the time it gets to the board for a final vote, we've, we've got it kind of where it needs to be and we're in consensus. That doesn't mean that we don't disagree, and I'll tell you there are times that we, we disagree, but we disagree on the, on, um, for the benefit of our community and work through those issues to make sure that we're raising the issues for our districts, for the county-wide to say there are opposing views, how do we get to a solution? So when it gets to the county board for a vote, we've kind of already negotiated. I think this is incredibly important because it demonstrates how we can work and collaborate, how people of different opinions and different views really have what's best for our community and for the county at heart, and so we can move those things forward. Now sometimes we don't get there and we don't have consensus, but we know that it's issue-based and not personal-based, uh, so that when we, we can move on to the next thing and continue to do that good work together. And it's a, it's a great environment uh, at Ramsey County and it benefits all of our taxpayers in Ramsey County. Thank you. Candidate Maddox Castillo, uh, this next question is for you. What is your experience with budgeting and can you describe what that's like? 
Yeah, so we've had um, now four years of budgeting, uh, specifically on the county government. Um, it has been a really great experience. Uh, Chair um, Reinhardt, who chairs our budget committee, has been a great mentor. Uh, Victoria Reinhardt has been a great mentor. But um, really thinking about how we take a look and hear from every department on what they're working on, what the needs of the department is. And as I said, this year we rolled out performance-based budgeting for the first time, really backing that up to evaluate. We're the only county in the region that does a two-year budget, uh, and we do that really for planning purposes so our communities know what we're thinking about as far as a levy or a tax, but also so our residents know what to expect as well. There's not big surprises. And so we're kind of planning out a two-year picture to think about what needs to happen. But then we're also evaluating. So what? What difference did it make? Is, are, are the lives of our community better for it? Have there been changes that have come? Maybe we are expecting dollars from the federal government or the state that either weren't received or sometimes new money comes in and we need to roll that out. So really taking a hard look line by line at the budget to make sure we're using dollars appropriately, that we're having the biggest return on our, our investment, and we're delivering the services that we need to deliver. Thank you. Candidate Singleton. Mm -hmm. Well, I've also been a small business owner uh, since 1997, and so um, I've had to budget my small businesses, and uh, when you have a small business, you know, it's not that, um, you know, the line's not that uh, big, and so you have to be able to um, prioritize and um, and you have to be able to understand uh, where you can put things and when you can put things. Um, I was also with uh, the president of the district council over in Summit University. We had uh, a budget there. I was a city commissioner with uh, Roseville and we had to also deal with uh, budgeting there uh, along the same lines. And uh, the main thing is the well when you're with a small business you have to make sure you budget to make sure you can keep your business going uh, and I think when you're budgeting with a city county or state uh, you have to make sure that uh, your budget is in line with uh, public safety and essential uh, city county or state services Thank you. Next question, uh, and Kenneth Singleton, I'll start with you. Mm -hmm. Domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assaults, and stalking continue to plague many of our nation's communities, but immigrant women, LGBTQ plus victims, community of color, and native women face particular challenges. What would you do to ensure that all victims of violence receive the protection and services they need? What was that second one? It was domestic violence and which, which other one? Uh, dating violence, sexual assault, dating and violence. stalking. Okay. Well, as far as uh, my understanding uh, with the position of county commissioners, uh, we establish policy and operations and we fund different uh, different budgeting line items. So I would make sure as your commissioner that uh, the, the law enforcement and other nonprofits that uh, showed that they had some success, I would make sure that they were funded properly so that um, that we could continue to prevent and also prosecute people that are engaged in domestic violence. Thank you. Candidate Manuel Castillo. Thanks, it's a really timely question as it's Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Uh, and um, we have worked really hard. In fact, I'll be presenting a proclamation with our uh, partner, St. Paul's, in. Partners in Prevention that really helps uh, mostly women, but women and families who are escaping domestic violence to get safe. Um, 
we we fund at the county several programs for domestic violence prevention, for sexual assault response teams, and we've even added additional funding to put in an, uh, an investigator in the county attorney's office to address these issues. So, you know, we um, we believe strongly at the county, and I support the start by believing. So, if a victim comes forward with a with a um, sharing that they have been a victim of abuse, we believe them and we start there and we make sure that we uh, engage and connect them with an advocate to get the help that they need, that we're connecting with mental health services or get them to a point of safety to remove them from the situation and then walk alongside them individually. This is a really important issue as we think about violence in our community and ongoing trauma and to make sure that we're really helping our community heal and we're doing the work uh, to support them. We put funding out, we just had an RFP and um, we'll be voting here shortly on the funds that are being dispersed to community partners that work in domestic violence to make sure that the appropriate services are being delivered um, into the community as well. And this is something I strongly believe in. Thank you. Uh, we have one more question, and it's going to be a one-minute question. Uh, and candidate Mattis Castillo, I'm have you go first. Okay. Share the role model that inspired you to participate in public service. I would say it was easily my mother. Um, my mom has was kind of a champion and an advocate uh, in her own way. Um, as a young child, I grew up in a military family. Uh, my father served in the military and was in the Desert Storm when I was in high school. And my mom quickly, believe, quickly noticed there weren't any services for military families here in Minnesota and started the family assistance program. Uh, and I watched as she she really stepped out to make sure that um, kids and families had services and a connection to the military while our, while our parents were at war. And that continued on throughout um, my adulthood. Uh, and, and in fact, when I joined the military myself, you know, my mom was the champion there and I watched how she gave time and time again uh, and, and the dedication to service, both as growing up, but also um, to other families without question, uh, to our own detriment and exhaustion at times, but always saying yes and ready to go. Thank you. Candidate Singleton. Okay. Well, I, I would say that uh, my role model would be, you know, my grandfather, uh, my mother, and my father. So my grandfather was a uh, principal in the St. Paul Public School System. He served the St. Paul District for 38 years. Um, he um, was a role model in um, trying to help kids, you know, probably he was a secondary principal, so he, he was trying to um, develop kids and kids of color. He was also a scout leader. Um, and so watching him throughout the years and um, him teaching me uh, the way to that public service is, is a, a important way of giving back to your community. Um, I would say that um, that that he was uh, the the main role model that I had in my life. Thank you. That concludes the Q and A portion of the forum. We now move to closing statements. Again, allowing for up to three minutes for each candidate. And candidate Mattis Castillo, I'm having you go first. Great, thank you so much, and thank you again for having us uh, this evening. It's always a great opportunity to talk to our voters and to our community to share the great work that Ramsey County is doing and the way that we're looking at it moving forward. Um, I have sincerely enjoyed serving on the board over the last four years. As I mentioned before, it was an exciting four years, unexpected, but really great opportunity and demonstrated the power of collaboration and how we work together to move forward for our community. In the next four years, I think it's a, a continuation of building on, but even going deeper, so beyond in the budgeting process, not just performance-based budgeting, but having a collaboration of community coming together and having input on the budget, as well as thinking about how we roll out new programs to address climate change. 
Uh, we didn't even get a chance to talk about the rollout of organics recycling, which is a really great opportunity uh, that will be rolling out next year that we've worked hard to make sure that every household in Ramsey County will be able to recycle their organics in their current bin. Uh, so more to come on that, exciting stuff happening and great work on the horizon. But then also going deeper on how do we transform our justice system uh, at the county and the responses to it to make sure that it's equitable and fair and not um, disparate for communities of color. How do we make sure that we grow our economy and our tax base with new programs and developments on the, on the rare resource of land that we have to make sure that we're not adding the tax burden to our community? There's a lot of exciting stuff. I'm in it all the way. I'm on the ground in the community talking to folks every day. Um, and this is a really exciting opportunity. The, I'll use my last minute just to give a plug about voting. And if you're watching and you haven't yet voted, you have 22 days yet to vote. So you have now until November 8th to go out and vote. And the entire ticket is incredibly important. Our democracy is at stake. Our issues on the ballot around bo choice and body autonomy, around making sure that our elections are fair and accessible, it's incredibly important. We have open voting sites now, you can still request your ballot, um, and more sites will open two weeks prior to the election, or you can go to your polling place. I would encourage voters to take a look, because we have had redistricting, and your, and your polling place may have changed. So go on the website at Ramsey County and check elections, and find out where your polling place is, and make a plan to vote on November 8th. Thanks. Thank you. Candidate Singleton. I would also like to thank you for inviting us to give our thoughts and our experiences um, and address the voters and um, the broader community as far as uh, what we would do if we were elected to this office. Um, public safety is a, is a big platform of mine, not only because I have experience, but, I th but without public safety, any of these other initiatives are not going to be successful. You have to, you have to, any elected official, any appointed official, that is their main priority, is to keep the public safe. And in District 3, I don't think this, the public has been kept safe. I'm not blaming that on any one person, but you have to have the right uh, priorities you have to have the education, and you have to be able to get out there and find out what's going on. You have to support the law enforcement. You've got to give them the proper funding to do what they need to do. Um, and so that's what I will do first as your Ramsey County Commissioner is make sure that the community is safe. Once the community is safe, then we can talk about some of the other programs that we can implement into the community that will be beneficial for all of us and um, make sure that um, we're not putting people in harm's way. You know, it's important, you know, for us to protect our families, our children, and people in the business community. We need to develop the business community in District 3. They're not going to come in, you know, while shots are being fired and people are getting killed every other day. That's just not going to happen. So um, I have the experience, I've got the leadership, and I've got the support to make that happen. And if you elect me as your Ramsey County Commissioner, sometimes you have to do something different to get the result that you're looking for. Doing the same thing all the time doesn't always uh, do it. So again, my name is David Singleton. Uh, I am your candidate for Ramsey County Commissioner District 3, and I'm asking for your vote on November 8th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. That ends our forum for tonight and has been a privilege to give the public a platform to better understand the candidates running for office in their district. 
There are many other topics for which we did not have time, so check out the campaign literature, candidate websites, or vote411.org if you would like more information. Again, I would like to remind you that the views expressed in this forum are those of the candidates, not those of the League of Women Voters of St. Paul or Roseville area. Sponsorship of this forum is not an endorsement of any candidate by League. You can find more information about voting at mnvotes.org and lwvmn.org. In addition to holding candidate forums, the League also researches issues important to our members and to the health of our communities. If you're interested in finding out more about what we do and how you too can make a difference, please visit us at lwvmn.org. Membership is open to all, age 16 and older. We'd like to thank you all for coming tonight and our, our at-home audience for viewing. We would also like to thank the St. Paul Neighborhood Network and Nine North for their time and resources, making it possible for the community to hear from their candidates. I would like to personally thank my fellow League members who diligently plan this event and are working extremely hard tonight. Without them, this forum could not have happened. Finally, we would especially like to thank our candidates for being part of the democratic process by running for office and for being willing to serve our community. Thank you all again for your time and attention and remember to vote on November 8th. Good night. Yeah, it's nice of me to